Let's spend a moment on employment-linked incentives, which Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman introduced in this budget. Do you see ELIs as being an adequate uh, device or a, you know, as a positive step in trying to deal with the central issue of job creation? So, again, it's identifying the problem that really needs to be addressed in terms of creating more uh, employment and more jobs being created. It's still early to figure out what the impact of it is going to be, but, you know, the pieces of it concept looks interesting, but we're going to have to wait and see. We think coupling that with these other reforms, for example, what I talked about in terms of implementing the new labor codes that are there, because that provides more have flexibility in the labor globally? market, that can help. Have employment-linked incentives, it's very specific to the country, and it depends upon how it's being used and where it's being implemented. So, uh, you know, there's no... Countries put very different policies in place. I don't know if there's an exact match to what's being put in India right now. Uh, but again, what we know in terms of job creation and, and employment is in addition to measures of this kind is to have just basic structural reforms, improving business climate, raising corporate private investment, uh, labor market flexibility, land reforms, and so on. Given the scale of job creation that's needed, so we crunch some numbers, and if you look at what's needed between now and 2030 is anywhere between, cumulatively, between 60 million and 148 million additional jobs. Right? That scale of job creation will require a wide, big push. And I know there's this big debate going on whether we should be manufacturing focused or services focused or high tech focused. Given the scale of job creation that's needed, it's going to require everything. So having the right business environment, right, right investment climate, the right kind of human capital, right kind of health of the workers, all of that is going to be critical. It's going to require a big bang on multiple fronts. Prime Minister Modi has been speaking again and again about his vision of trying to make India an advanced economy by 2047, what he calls Amrit Kal and his vision of a Viksit Bharat, a developed India. On the back of the policies that you're seeing at play and the growth trajectory that you're seeing in, in front of you on the horizon, do you think India is on path currently to be an advanced economy by 2047? So firstly, again, I just want to emphasize that India is doing extremely well in terms of its growth rate. At 7%, it is the fastest growing major economy in the world. And being able to keep that up, which is what we expect it will do, 6.5%, I mean, that is a, a large accomplishment. Now, 2047 is a very long ways out. I think we can look at some intermediate targets around the way, along the way. We expect by 2027, India could be the third largest uh, economy in the world based on our growth projections. 27, not 28 or 29. Based on our current projections, 2027 uh, is when we expect that that could, ha that could happen. But what happens all the way in another, you know, several, uh, several more years later, of course, that's, you know, that's a long run. Now, we have to keep in mind that most middle-income countries have not graduated into advanced economy status, the so-called middle-income trap, where that doesn't happen. Uh, but it takes, it's the countries that keep up with persistent structural reforms on multiple fronts and graduating not just from at some point where it is more of you know, using techniques that exist to moving to being more innovation-driven economies, making that transition happen to it. It takes all of that to get to being an advanced economy. There are small exceptions like South Korea and Singapore that have accomplished that. India can certainly, uh, you know, work towards that uh, goal, but it's going to require a huge movement on multiple fronts. One of the big challenges with India's economic growth is the specter of growing income inequality. The fact that the rich are getting richer, uh, the poor are getting poorer. How do you think the Indian state and the Indian government should really be trying to tackle that challenge? So firstly, I mean, growth in India has helped a very large spectrum of people in India. I mean, poverty rates over the last decade have come down by a whole lot. So it has lifted a large number of people uh, in the country. Now, there is there's the question of the different levels of growth that you're seeing in their incomes, and frankly, better data would help in that front. We just, we've been looking at it. It's hard to pin a story over there. What we do see is unevenness. There are some parts doing better than the others. The higher income, urban, do better, rural, uh, doing uh, not, as, not as well. Uh, and so, you know, that is an area where certainly more attention can be given, and the government is doing that, and we saw that in the, in the budget uh, measures, too, that have been taken. 
But again, how do you bring that around? I think there is the the same set of factors I explained to you before, which is in terms of the near term versus the longer term, right? In terms of the longer term, better human capital, better skill mis, uh, match with the kinds of jobs that are going to be created for the future. That's going to be absolutely critical. Raising productivity in agriculture so that the workers move out of agriculture into the newer sectors is going to be absolutely uh, important. So these kinds of broad-based reforms will be, will be critical. One of the big concerns is the specter of India getting caught in the middle income trap, $8,000 per capita, and you're not able to rise your population above that. And the fact is that India has such a big population that it's also a highly likely scenario. Uh, how concerned are you about this possibility that, okay, you're talking about an advanced economy, but the very real fear is that you could just get stuck like a lot of other countries in the middle income trap? Firstly, I think if India can keep up growth at 7 8% for the next decade, you know, let's set aside the question of whether that gets you to advanced economy status or not, but that itself would be a, a big accomplishment. So, you know, everything along the way matters as much as getting to an advanced economy status. If you can get to an upper middle income uh, country status, in, along the way, of course, that would be fantastic. So, I'm, you know, I think we should, uh, you know, I think it's great, we should absolutely aspire for 2047 and the target that's been set there. But along the way, it will be very impressive if India keeps its growth rate up. We don't see that in many countries around the world right now where growth is slowing in many places. If you look at global growth as a whole, it is, it's, you know, our projections for the medium term is the weakest it's been in decades. And many countries who were hit with all the headwinds in the last few years didn't really recover that well. India has done well. So, it, you know, I think one should take some, some strength from that.